we have our resistance value, which is less than one, it will permit electrons to flow to that direction as fast as possible. You're watching Makoga Enterprises. Today we are going to be discussing on ethane and bonding. So we'll start from uh, definition, the different types, importance, materials installation, testing, and we'll be referencing to QCS 2014. I have to share my screen now so we get to see. Okay. Like I said, today we'll be discussing on ethane and bonding. The first part, which is the definition. What is ethane? It's a system that connects specific parts of an electric power system equipment with the ground on or earth. Typically the earth's conductive surface for safety and functional purposes. I'll take you to the next to the graphic which shows a building and how earthing system is being done in that building. As you can see, we have um, an earth rod that is being driven to the ground and connected to this electrical service board, as you can see. So we have our earth wire, which is running from the DB or the earth electrical service board going to the earth rod. So it's connected to the earth rod and driven to the ground. And then we have backfilling as well, which is but we backfill the, the air rod as we drive, drive, drive it to the ground. On the other side, we have an air rod which is driven to the ground. And then we have a yellow green wire that is connected to the air rod going to the building. Move to the next slide, which is bonding. Bonding is connecting multiple conductive components with conductor that are not intended to carry current. So we get to understand that bonding is just connecting piece of wire to several or multiple points. It could either be on a panel board, equipment, housing, etc. So it's connected with the intention not to carry current. So it only carries current or probably a current might flow through the conductor if or during the event of an air fall. I'll move to the next slide. You see here now we have this graphic, which we have glanding and termination, which is done on a panel board. And then we have a bonding that is connected to each part of the gland. The next graphic as well, we have also bonding. We've bonded this panel. So we've connected to the plate of the panel board, connected to the, pan, the panel enclosure, and then connected to the door, as you can see. The next slide will be different types of etting. So we have, we have different types of etting. We have a TNC etting system, which is earth neutral are combined. The next is TNS, which is earth neutral are separated. We have TNCS, earth neutral are combined and separated. We have TT system, which is theta, which is earth, earth. So both the consumer side as well as the, the, the supply side, they are all added. We have the IT, which is added, earth is isolated. So the next part now, we are going to now focus on QCS 2014. So if you're there with your code book, you can go to section 21, electrical works, part 22, which is earthing and bonding. Okay. 
Okay, you better open your code book so we get to start with the lesson. So this is QCS 2014, section 21, part 22. This is the content, which is going to start with general scope, references, quality assurance, submitters, then we move to products, materials, installation, and testing. We we'll move to point 22.1, which is general. We we'll move to the scope, 22.1.1. So we have this part specifies the requirements of, for earthing and bonding. Point number two, related parts and section are as follows. We have part one, general provision for electrical installation. Part two, high voltage or HV and medium voltage or MV factory build assembly. Part six, cables and small wiring. Part seven, conduits. Part eight, trunking. And part nine, cable tray. Our references is going to be BS7430, which is a code from British Standard, quality assurance, design criteria. The earthing system shall be in accordance with Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation, which is the rules and regulations. So you better go through the two different codes. We'll go through the Karama rules and regulation, and then we go through as well to the QCS 2014. So we merge both of them in order to get a quality system of work. We we'll move now to submitters. Shop drawing and product data, which is as per part one. Point number E, submit full technical details and conductor size calculations of each type of cable or wire proposed. So in this case, a submitter will be, a submitter will be done, which is um, assembling different set of documents. Then we submit it as, a submitter, which will be the shop drawing. And we assemble as well different technical data sheets or calculations that will be used for that particular submitter. Point B, which is submit exact route of each cable or wire proposed. So for each route or wire proposed, we'll be talking of the cable tray or cable trunking, depending on which um, cable containment have been used for that cable or the, the head, uh, conductor that will be pulled in there for one point to be pulled from one point to the other point. We we'll move now to products. 22.2.1, which is a material. Generally, point A, products used in the earthing system shall be copper or an approved copper alloy, unless otherwise specified. They specifically and specifically manufactured for that purpose or for the purpose. So all um, earthing systems shall be copper. So for all projects that are operating in Qatar should be copper when using the earthing system. Point number two, which is earth, earth continuity conductors. A, sizes shall be as specified by General Electricity and Water Corporation, unless otherwise indicated, but in no case shall size be less than half that of the associated fees conductors. So in this case, I would like to elaborate a little bit on this point. So when they say the size of conductor should not be less than half that of the associated phase conductor. In this case now, what, what, what is the code trying to tell us? It's trying to let us understand that if we have a size of conductor that has been sized for phase, so this size of, of conductor should not be less than half of that size that have been sized for the phase, which is pulled for a particular panel board. For example, we'll give an example where maybe we have a 300 square mm cable or four core 300 square mm cable have been pulled from LV panel going to a sub-main distribution board. So in this case, our earth conductor 
should be 300 square mm divided by two, which is going to be 150 square mm conductor that will be used for the earth, which will be yellow green. So move to the next point, which is insulation shall be of the same material as insulation in associated sub circuits. So all the different circuits, the insulations are going to be the same. So if we have the insulation for the for four core cables that we are going to pull from either the LV panel going to the sub main distribution board, the same material also should be used for the wire or the conductor that will be pulled for the earth conductor. Point number three. So we move now to the main earth loop. We'll be using 25 by 3 mm thin copper tape unless otherwise indicated. So in this case, I'm going to take you to a graphic. So we get to see now this uh, 25 by 3 mm thin copper. So we move to, okay, this is these are the graphics. So it should be clear so that when we see this thin copper, we will know this is the type that is used for projects. These are the connections. These are the connectors that are used. As you can see. Okay, this is it connected in a building. So I'll move now to the full point, rod electrodes. So it shall be of the earth rod type. So I'll take you to a graphic now to the earth rod. Okay, we have the earth rod here. It should be of this type. This is the air rod driven to the ground. So this is, these are the air rods. This is the air rod that it should be used. Okay, this as well is driven to the ground and we have also our air conductor that is connected on the clamp of the air rod, which is moving to the building. So the next part now is going to be we move to point number four, which is B. Ed rod electrodes shall be 16 mm in diameter, steel core, copper jacketed type, comprising a high strength steel alloy, alloy core, with a molded, molded, molten, welded copper covering. So C is going to be the length as required should be 1.2 meter sections coupled by strong bronze couplers. Point number five is going to be earth connectors. Connections of rod electrodes. So we are going to have some connect connectors. I'll take you to a graphic for the connectors. So these are the connectors where we are going to connect our, earth, our, our wires that are leaving from the head pit or probably the head rod going to our building. This is the graphic. In this as well, we have um, the head conductor that is connected to it and then moving to the building. So we move now to point number six, which is removable head links. In this case now, to comprise a bolted copper link fixed on porcelain insulators and complete with studs, knots, and washers, to take the head tape and a bolted lock adequately sized for the final connection of the head electrode. So in this case, we'll be talking of the head bar where we have these connection links or removable links or removable head links. 
So I'll take you to another graphic. So we see the ad bars. Here's an ad bar. So we have this one with single disconnection link. So this is how many ways we start counting from here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six disconnection, six, um, one disconnection link with six terminals. This as well, six ways, one, two, three, four, five, six, six ways with one disconnection link. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven way to disconnection link. As you can see, the disconnection links now is where we'll be able to adjust or probably remove from the connections that we have going to the feeders or to the feeder panels. So once we disconnect from this point, we'll be able to carry out probably maintenance. We disconnect from here, it goes up, and then it isolate the whole entire head bar. Move now to the next point. We have bolts, washers, and nuts in bolted connectors, connections. Point number eight, which is the earth pit cover. The earth pit cover shall be heavy duty construction, shall have a recessed lifting hook, shall have a brass plate and graft, electrical earth below with number, we'll put a referencing number, including identification number as per the approved drawings. I'll take you now to the head pit cover so we we'll see how it looks. This is the graphic. This is a recess type. Move to the next. So it has an X symbol and written there a rod. So all this will be as per the project specification. This is a hook which will be used to remove the cover while carrying on maintenance. As you can see, this is a cover which is removed from the head pit. So we'll move to the next point, which is 22.3, which is installation. Point number one, circuit wiring. It shall have a green slash yellow colored insulated earth continuity cable connecting the earth bus or earth terminal in switch boards, switch gears, motors, motor control centers, and panel boards to the motor equipment outlets and other devices by adding blocks or handrails and other metal works within two meters of a potentially live metal, metal surface shall be added. So in this case now we'll have our yellow green wire or our yellow green conductor that will be connected to the different panel boards or the different equipment and connected to our add bars. The next point is going to be main head loops. Fix in me mechanical equipment rooms and other areas indicated on the drawing. So we follow the drawing strictly. Whatever is mentioned in the drawing, like we didn't mention before in the submitter, you submit the material submitter and then submit the shop drawings as well. So the shop drawing is going to be um, a replicant from the IFC. So once that is approved by the consultant, we are going to follow strictly the drawings in carrying out the installation works. Point number three, we move to removable head links. So we discussed this one already previously, where we have our head bars that are having either single disconnection link or double disconnection links. Fourth point, expose earth cables. Install and locate in a manner to provide maximum mechanical protection, utilizing ceiling corners, suspended ceiling 
and webs of beams as, so, as much as possible. Bolted connections, all this part we discussed already above, where we have our bolted connections that are either connected on the, the head rod or on the head bars. It should be braced connections. Where added, added terminal, where added terminal connections are to be braced to equipment. Seven point connections between between metals. The eight points equipment adding. So equipment adding now will be the different equipments that are installed in the building. So we are going to connect all the different add cables to the equipment and then take them to the add bars. Connect all known current carrying metallic parts of the electrical me or mechanical installation to the earthing system. Point B, known current carrying metallic parts of the electrical installation include first point. So this part now is just, the code is just trying to let you understand what are the different um, parts that are known metallic parts. So it lists all the three different parts so the wire carrying the electrical installation works on site, we know what we are doing. The code is to guide us. Nine point, firefighting equipment. Add on separate ring system. And this is exactly what is done for all the different projects. The firefighting equipment, we might be talking of the fire pump rooms. So the fire pump rooms will have its own separate earthing that is going to the earth or going to the ground. Motors adding, adding. Connect the motor terminal box to the relative earth loop. The terminal must be mechanically connected to the frame. Or where this is, where this is not feasible. So in this case, after we connect our earth cables to our terminal box, at the same time, we are going to leave another connection from there and then goes to the frame or to the yoke of the electric motor. Extend the earthing conductor through an insulated bush opening in the connection box and connect to the frame. This is a point which I just explained now. 11 point, main switch box, switch gears and motor control centers earthing. Point A, Connect the special earthing lock or bus bars inside the cabinet to the main earth copper tip. Connect all parts of the switch boards, switch gears, and motor control centers other than live parts to the earth bar in the board in an approved manner. The MV slash MCC panel shall be connected at both ends of the MV slash MCC panel to a two separate earthing pits directly or through intermediary earthing bar installed in MV slash MCC basement or as approved by the engineer, the earthing cable calculation shall be performed and approved professional international recognized license software subject to the engineer's approval. Distribution boards, adding. So distribution board, we are going to add it as well. We'll get the adding which is living from the add pit should come to the DBs or the distribution board. And we'll, always, we'll also have bonding, which will be bonded from the panel inside and then connected to the doors of the distribution boards. Bus dock feeders, cable armor adding. So this case where we have all cables that are glanded and terminated on panel boards, it could either be DB, distribution boards, some main distribution board, LV panels, et cetera. In this case, all the armor cables are going to be bonded. We bond all the, armor, the, all the armoring of the, the glands and ensure that it has an add continuity.
This is very important. Point A, extens extensible rods of the same diameter shall be installed in holes drilled into the ground. All ground conditions permit. Rods may be driven into the ground either manually or mechanically. The earth electrode shall be installed at such a depth that is that it penetrates the summer water table by the minimum of two meters. So it should penetrate to the summer water, should go above two meters, from two meters above, in such a way that it penetrates to the summer water. In that case, we might be having a successful value that we should be having for the air resistance. Point B, bold air connector connectors to the top of the rods in sufficient number to make connections with all incoming cables. We we'll move now to the head pit. Provide concrete PVC pit complete with a heavy duty concrete, which I explained already. I'm going to show you a graphic again for the head pit. This is the head pit. It should be in this manner, and it has a cover, which will be concrete. This is a hoop. This is a, this is a recess type. So we move now to transformers, which is point number 17. Transformer MCC MV panel adding. Point A, transformer ethane terminals are to be connected to MV main ethane bar. This should be separate by bare copper ethane conductor, which I showed you already, not less than 30 mm per 30 millimeter squared per 100 kilovolt ampere of transformer of transformer rating with minimum of 120 millimeter squared. So this is approved by Karama rules and regulation, which states that we should have our earth cable or the earth conductor should be 120 millimeters squared. So if we move to all the different substations, you find the size of cable that is installed for earth. Transformer neutral star point is to be connected by insulated conductor color black, should be black of color. This color is being uh, taken, mimic is taken from uh, the British standard where we have uh, um, ROYB and neutral, which is the black face, which is the black uh, conductor. To the MV slash the MCC panel, as per Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation rules and regulations. So it should be strictly followed. So when you carry out your electrical installation works and we have a Karama representative or a Karama inspector coming to your substation to inspect, you should fulfill all the different requirements before calling them to come for the inspection. MV slash MCC panel, ethane conductor to be at to ethane bar and ethane pit is to be sized for minimum at fault current for five seconds with final conductor temperature not exceeding 160 degrees Celsius or size not less than 20 millimeter square per 100 kilovolt ampere of transformer rating and with a minimum of 95 millimeter square of conductor. It should be strictly followed. 22.3.2, testing. So we'll move now to the testing part of, after all the different installation works have been done, we've driven our head rod to the ground, we've done our uh, conductor uh, connections from the head pit, which is going to our head bars, or to the designated head bars. And then from the head bars now going to the different equipment, it could be either our uh, heavy panels or transformers, our uh, uh, sub-main distribution board, our distribution board. Once all that is done, 
that is the time that we move now to the testing. I'll move to the first point. This part is very, very important and we should pay attention when we are carrying out our, uh, our testing for the earth continuity or probably the earth electro test. The first point will be testing acting system shall be done by the earth mega test. So always ensure that the mega test or the mega tester or the earth mega tester that is being used to perform this test should be cali calibrated before carrying out the test and ensure that the same should be used for the inspections in case the consultant has been called for um, inspection. The electrical resistance value of the ethin system shall not exceed one ohm. So it should be one ohm or less than one ohm. So any value that we have which is greater than one ohm will not be acceptable. In this case, we will have, I'll take you back now to Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the current flowing through a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance at a constant temperature. So we have a length of conductor. We have electrons that will be flowing through it, which is a current. So current will be flowing through it. And then we have voltage, which is holding back the electrons from not flowing. As such, we have also, no, we have voltage. Sorry for that, we have voltage that is pushing the electrons to flow, while we have resistance holding electrons not to flow. You see what happens? So once the resistance, as the resistance is holding, the electrons not to flow, at the same time, voltage is pushing. So voltage is a pressure that pushes the electrons to move, while resistance is a total opposition to the free flow of electrons. Then current now is a free flow of electrons. So once electrons are flowing, we have current flowing through the cable. So in this case, the reason why we should have this value less than one ohm or equals to one ohm since we know that current is equal to voltage of our resistance. So if we have our resistance value, which is less than one, it will permit electrons to flow to that direction as fast as possible. So if there's um, any earth fault or an, in an event of an earth fault, what happens is we'll have a current which would be greater than the nominal current. So in that case, it is looking for a path to move. And that path now will be a suitable path that is the reason why we are carrying out the ethin system in the building. So we carry out this ethin system, we put in our head rod, we drive it down to the ground, carry out the test, ensure that it is less than one ohm. As such, we know that if there is any head fault, when that value of current is being generated, what happens is it will move itself and goes directly to the ground or to the earth, which is very important. But if there is no earth, which has been carried out in that building, what happens is it moves back and then struggling to look away to move to the ground. There is no way. Now, what happens is if somebody is standing next to that panel board, what happens is this amount of current is going to hit that person instantly because that is the easiest part for the current to move. So once it moves to your body, it goes back to the panel. Before you know, it hits the panels and all the panels will be damaged. Point number two. The resistance of any point of earth continuity system to the earth, to the main earth electrode shall not exceed one ohm unless approved or the, otherwise by Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation. <clears throat> this is a case where when we have project commencing, we submit our material submitters. So, and then also we submit the method statements. So this method statement in the methodology, we are going to outline or give specifically how we want or how the ethene system will be carried out. So in a case where we have all our ed rods or the layout of our ethene system have been approved, so we have maybe 10 rods that will be installed, driven to the ground. So in this case, when we are carrying out our testing and we find out that the value is greater than one ohm, as the code says, in this case, we might be adding some chemicals in order to reduce the resistance value or probably increase 
the uh, numbers of head rods that should be installed in that building. So in adding the chemical now should be um should be discussed with the engineer in charge before doing or adding the chemical. So all these different aspects should be labeled or stated in the method statements. Point number three, install additional air electrodes. This is the point number three here now, which we already discussed. Install additional air electrodes if these figures are not met. So if these figures are not met, we have to install an additional head rod or an additional head electrode. So it should be worst case scenario whereby you now start bringing in chemicals to be installed in order to reduce the value so that we get the satisfied value, which is mentioned as per code, which is one ohm or less than one ohm. So I'll take you to a graphic so we see how ethane is being done in an installation without ethane and ethane and what is the severity when it comes to safety. So we'll move to this graphic. As you can see here, the first graphic Electrical system without ethane. There is no ethane in this system. So we have the transformer here, which is ethane. We have cables that are running to our electrical equipment. So we have somebody standing next to it. What happens? It could be either a washing machine that this guy is using, probably he wants to wash his dresses and all that. So once while he's working on that um, uh, electrical equipment, if the electrical equipment is not ethered. So what happens is if you touch the equipment, as you can see on the graphic, we'll have current now that is flowing from the transformer side coming to the equipment and move to the equipment. If there's any if there's an effort, what happens is we'll have the frame of that equipment will be live. And if it is live, if this person touches it, as you can see, as he touches it, current now will flow now from the frame of the equipment and move to the, to the person's body, We move all over his body, goes and looking for a path to move to the ground. As he keeps moving, if there is no path to the ground, it keeps moving. And before you know it, he has uh, uh, an issue to play. Uh, he has a problem to face. Uh, the, the, the person will face severity and his heart will start pumping. So if you go to the next graphic, you see that we have an um, electrical system with ethane. In this case, we have ethered the electrical system on both the supply side and the equipment side. So the transformer is ethered, and then we have our equipment as well, which is ethered. So if this person touches, he's free. So you look at the two graphics. You see that here is ethered. So if there is any effort, we have current that will flow, move to the equipment body, and then directly will move to the ground since it's ethered. This is the safety part of it. So it should be raised and as a concern that ethane should be used in a building as a code says. So there is no building that should be, if you have any building or any electrical installation works that are carrying out in building, we should ensure that we carry out ethane system for safety purposes. Like I did mention, this video is on electrical bonding and ethane, or electrical ethane and bonding, which is going to give you an insight on understanding what is electrical ethane and bonding and the advantages when it, it has to play in building. And when the building is not ethered, what are the different disadvantages that we'll start facing? And when the building is uh, entered, what are the advantages that we will have in that building? So also, um, the video, this video as well is um, going to, is just to let you understand that before carrying out any electrical installation works, we should focus on the codes and standard of kata electrical or um, construction specification. So in this video, we focus on QCS 2014 and 
I will also recommend that you go as well to Karama rules and regulation, compare both so that you, you work on both in order to carry out a successful and quality electrical system. Thanks for watching and the then you're watching Makoge Enterprises. Please do like, subscribe and share and keep sharing. And also do comment if there are any critics or anything that you, you want that we should add in the video will make more content that you'll be seeing as well. And then also turn on the notification bell so that anytime we upload any new video, you are going to be notified. You are going to be notified. Thank you. You're watching Makoge Enterprises.